Hi, welcome back to the Cuzzy Sound channel and what's going to be the last video in the series all about Project 920 Modular Analog Synth. In this video we're going to be looking at the big panel at the end here which is a Baby 8 sequencer. But before we get to that, if you watched the last video and I talked about the mixer, you may remember I said that it, it's got an amplifier in there which gives a really good signal which will, will drive a really nice line signal or even a speaker. Um, but if you plug headphones into there, then you're likely to either damage your headphones, your hearing, or both. So I decided to do something about that, and I made this. What is it? It's an inline attenuator for plugging headphones in. Inside, it looks like this. So on one end, we've got a 3.5 millimeter mono jack plug. On the other end, we've got a 3.5 millimeter stereo jack socket. At the mono end, we have two 1K resistors, which have been joined together in series. One end of those, one of those series resistors is connected to the mono input, the other end is connected to ground, and then the point at which they both join is connected to the both of the uh, inputs on, or outputs, because it's a socket, on the stereo side. So left and right stereo are both joined to the junction of the two resistors. Those two resistors are acting as a voltage divider um, because they're both matched, it's roughly halving the voltage output um, from the mono end to provide an output at the stereo end. So, what I did then, in order to kind of seal it all up, was to put some heat shrink tubing around it, so it all hides away nicely and looks like this. I actually did two layers of heat shrink tubing to... Uh, beef it up and strengthen it up a bit and yeah it all looks very neat and looks like this and I've tested it out and yes it solves the problem you can actually turn all the volumes right up to the top and you're not particularly distorting well you're not distorting the headphones I use and it's not too painful on the ears but still with a decent output so that's how I got round uh, putting headphones in to the mixer. So what we'll do now, we'll move in closer to the uh, Baby 8 panel and have a look at what's in there and how I put it together. Here we are with the Baby 8 sequencer. As the name suggests, it's an 8-step sequencer. The basic design is, is a standard Baby 8 design. It's the same one that I used in my Little Boxes Baby 8 sequencer. Um, so a, a slight modifications here and there. So we'll have a look at, at what controls we've got. The orange knobs are used to set the CV level for each of the steps. You know, red LEDs underneath indicate which step we're on. Then at this end here, this is the clock speed this button here, I'll put some power on it and I'm actually see things happening. This button here is a reset, so if I press this button it goes back to step one. This button here is a step function which allows me to step along each of those which is great for kind of tuning each step in because it's linear um, there's no quantizing on this, um, so it's you can't just kind of tweak it and it will step up in, in semitones or whatever you want it to do. Everything is, is kind of just linear voltages, which the whole of the synth is, so it all fits together quite nicely. Um, so yeah, so that, that, that's the clock speed, reset button, step function. The switch on the end here, if I switch it up, you should see the lights start to run. That's switching in the internal clock. 
switch it to the center now the clock is still running it's just not connected to the actual sequencer section I'll show you this in a moment we'll have a look at how I've built it but finish talking through the controls if we flip the switch down it actually brings in this socket at the bottom here which allows you to use an external clock signal and then these three are outputs we have the CV output which is the CV on for whichever step we're on and then these two these actually generate a gate signal but the gate signal isn't generated from the sequencer steps I generate the gate signal from the clock input whether that be the internal clock or the external clock um, and what I've got this one gives me roughly 8 volts gate output and this one gives me roughly 5 volts gate output that's just so there's a bit more compatibility with any external gear that you might want to clock from this particular sequencer so how did I build it? well I've actually built it in, in two parts well, three if you can't count the actual panel so I have the clock board which looks like this it's a 555 timer um, with a, a speed control and a clock output but also from the clock output you can see there's a transistor there it goes it goes into the transistor which then provides me with either the 8 volt output or also on the output of the transistor there is a voltage divider which will knock it down knock the 8 volts down to around about 5 volts so that's how I generate a clock signal and generate gate outputs based on the clock signal now when I plug an external clock in the external clock gets connected to the uh, base of the transistor so the external clock pulse will also generate a 5 and 8 volt gate output um, so that's that's what the strip board layout for the clock and gate board is then the other board is the actual sequencer board which on the board itself there's not that many components so you've got a, a 4017 uh, decade counter um, wired up in standard sequencer baby 8 sequencer kind of configuration so that basically just, just generates the the steps to actually generate the uh, the actual control voltages that's pretty much done on the panel itself so the back of the panel looks a little bit like that well it does look a lot like this um, and you can see that the the pots are mounted on the panel but then we've got um, a resistor and LED for each of the pots but we've also got a diode which makes sure that the signal all goes in the right direction ie to the CV output and then when all the boards are all mounted on to the back of the panel and everything's all wired together the back of the panel looks a little bit like this so yeah quite a quite a big board quite quite complicated in terms of wiring it's, it's in reality it's not that complicated it's just repetitive um, so it's just having the patience to sit there and uh, carefully wire each one up in the right orientation and then plug it all in so pretty much that's what the uh, how I put the baby 8 together so let's now patch it into the rest of the synth and hear what it does starting off with a very simple patch I've got the CV out from baby 8 going to the CV in on square wave oscillator 
and I've got the square wave out going in to the mixer. So, let's start the sequencer. We turn up the volume. Slow the speed down. So I've stopped it there, <clears throat> and in here it's still got the oscillator going, that's because we're not going through a, a VCA or, or the lateral or whatever. Um, but in this mode, this is where if I take it back to the beginning, I can now, when I was talking about the step through function, I can now step through. That's it. So I've now retuned that one, so we can set it going again. Okay, so that's at its most basic, just taking the CV output to control the pitch of the oscillator. Obviously, <clears throat> turn it back up again, I can set the, over, the, the kind of the reference pitch if you like. By altering the pitch setting on the oscillator. So there we go. Very, let's say, very, very basic, very limited control over it. But now what we can do, if I take the so quick recap, we've got square wave going into Vactral, out of Vactral into mixer, CV from. Baby 8 going to CV on VCO. Gate signal from Baby 8 going to the trigger input on the Vactrol. And if I start, well, one of the things I can do, if I turn the volume up now, nothing happens. Because we're waiting for a trigger signal to open up the Vactrol. So that should now get a trigger signal from the gate on and straight away you can hear the difference. It now actually sounds like a stepping sequencer. Let's go one step further, shall we? Shall we take the gate out and put it into our envelope generator, and then take the output from the envelope generator and we'll put that into our Vactrol. Okay, and I've got short attack, short release, So it sounds pretty much the same as it did last time. If I turn the attack up. Bring the release up.
So there you go. We will notice when we were tuning it before, before we went through Vactrol, I could step it and tune each step. One of the things you can't do now, I've got it going through the Vactrol, as I step it, it's not generating a continuous gate signal into the Vactrol, so I can't hear it to tune it. So what I'd have to do is literally go back to the very simple patch I had before, set up the each step, tune each step individually, and then reconfigure the patch so that I can use the Vactrol and it will all hopefully have stayed in tune. So there we go. The, uh, the other thing we could do is we could So what I am doing now, I'm using the get this right. I'm I'm using the five volt trigger to trigger the envelopes. I know it will trigger on on that. Um, and I'm also, but then I'm using the eight volt trigger to trigger the VCF, the filter. So let's fire it up and see what happens now. happening here is Vactrol is being triggered by the envelope but the actual filter is getting a, a short burst from so it's not the envelope that's create that's controlling the filter it is literally just a burst from the gate out from the sequencer of fun to be had by all yeah you can st start sharing signals around all over the place and and doing all sorts of crazy things with the triggering and the CV you can share the CV out into the second oscillator um, and you can get then start bringing in the octave to octave divider and everything starts to get really interesting um, but well yeah I could go on for much longer but um, I'm not going to do so this is pretty much it for the end of the series so I've shown you all the other stuff so you can kind of see how I put that together you've now seen how I put this particular sequencer together it's all based on stuff that I've done before if you go back to the overview video on, on this project the concept was to take what I've built before and what I've learned from building that and to build what would be uh, a, a version of my original Project 9 synth which Project 9 it's it's a single rail 9 volt synth so what can you do with a single rail 9 volt but update it using all the knowledge that I've gained from what I've done on building project 9, building the little boxes projects and even building project 12 which is a dual rail 12 volt pretty much kind of like a euro rack supply uh, power supply type synth um, although it's definitely not euro rack um, but yeah it's a little box there's some but it does some amazing things you can have hours and hours of fun with it and I've showing you pretty much all you need to go away and have a go build your own